Today, we want to talk about solving triangles. We have talked about solving pieces of triangles, but we want to talk about the more general game of solving an entire triangle. The game is, I give you three pieces of a triangle, you find the other three pieces of a triangle. We start with the solving right triangle variant of this game, where one of the pieces of given information is a right angle. So you definitely have a right angle to work with. That's one, and then you get two more. The things that I want to point out today are using rounded, uh, dealing with rounded information and our proper rounding technique. The reason that this is going to be important is that sometimes we're going to want to use uh, something that we calculated in another calculation, and that's when things are being dangerous. To take a value that's been rounded and to use it in a calculation could take that rounding error and magnify it as we go along. So. Let's talk about proper rounding technique. Let's make sure the calculator is on and in degree mode. Right. So let's take a look at one of the problems. I don't wanna just do your quiz for you. So I'm just gonna come up with a random problem, just completely at random. Uh, has nothing to do with any quiz. I'm just, just kind of coming up with things at random. And I'm going to mysteriously call this example quiz two. No, it's not quiz two. I'm just going to call it Q2. How about that? I don't want to do your quiz for you. So let's talk about most of you have done this anyway. So it's fine. It's fine. So you may have noticed that on these quizzes, I used this particular, oh, sorry, on these random examples that have nothing to do with the quizzes, I used this setup. I want uh, alpha and angle alpha and beta. Side A will be opposite angle alpha. Side B will be opposite angle beta. And side C will be the hypotenuse opposite the right angle. So in this problem, we have, are given that A is 8.3 centimeters and B is 11.5 centimeters. The three pieces of information we're given are side A, side B, and the right angle. So, in some hypothetical quiz, of which this is definitely not, I ask for very specific things. Uh, the reason is that we have too many choices. There are three things to find. And the information that we're given, we can kind of find whatever we want first. So I had to pick one to go first. So I picked hypotenuse. And then um, after hypotenuse, angle alpha, and then angle beta. All right. Oops. Stop sharing. Finding the hypotenuse first is good because it's going to create the opportunity for round off error, for rounding error. So let's find the hypotenuse first. Notice that the given information here is that we have, we are given two of the sides of a right triangle. So what tool can we use to find the third side of the right triangle? What tool is coming in play here? Pythagorean theorem. So we use we have two sides, finding the third side. So here we're going to use two sides to find the third side. This looks like a job for the Pythagorean theorem. So the Pythagorean theorem says the sum of the squares of the legs of a right triangle is equal to the square of the hypotenuse. So a squared plus b squared equals c squared is what we're going to have here. So a squared 
plus B squared equals C squared. We want C, so we're going to be adding things. So I have to take the square root of the sum of the squares of A and B. So what we're going to use is C is the square root of A squared plus B squared. And I'm going to write it in calculator format because that's how my calculator is set to display. So A is 8.3. Now square that and add B, which is 11.5. Got to square that. And I got to close parentheses because we're going to build good habits. So we're just going to use our calculating machine and find the square root of 8.3 squared plus 11.5 squared and close parentheses. So the calculator is going to return too many digits. This is too many digits to use. It's inappropriate to use this many digits. This is like saying I got up and weighed myself this morning and I have 199.7842563388 pounds. That doesn't make any sense at all because I could change a lot of those digits at the end by exhaling. That would just it wouldn't change 199.7 pounds. In fact, my scale would not display that at all because it only does 0 0.2468 because the scale knows that doesn't make sense to go any more than that. This is inappropriate to be based on 8.3 and 11.5, but the calculator is just gonna calculate her. We have been instructed to round to the nearest 10. So I actually don't need the two. I'm just gonna write down what we need. I'm just gonna write down 14.1, then the next thing. You look at the 10th and then the next thing after the 10th. So the 10th spot is one place to the right of the decimal point. It's one place to the right of the decimal point. It's gonna be 14 point something. So we look at the 10th spot, it's a one, but then the 100th spot is an eight. It's five or more, that means we've passed halfway, so we go to the next one. The idea behind rounding is if you pass halfway, keep going. The idea behind rounding is if you've passed halfway, then just keep going. A lot of times we make this into a process and we say, do this and do this and then do this. But that's bad if it's treating you like some kind of computer that requires some kind of algorithm. So I want to explain things just how we should think about that. The decision that we're trying to make when we're looking at 14.18. We're looking at the two tenths that this number is between. We are between 14.1. We're trying to make a decision between 14.1 and 
that's the number to the, the nearest tenth. We're trying to decide which of these nearest, which of these tenths is nearest. Are we closer to 14.1 or are we closer to 14.2? Halfway between 14.1 and 14.2 is 14.15. Halfway between is 14.15. Because we're between 10 and 20. So if we're at 14.15 or after, we just keep going to the nearest one, 14.2. Our number is 14.18 and then some other stuff that we don't care about. So we keep going to 14.2. Want to think about what decision are we trying to make? When we round to the nearest 10, 14.18 is between 14.1 and 14.2. Which one are we closer to? That's what we're trying to decide. Any questions? If, for example, we had 14.13, we look at the one, the three is less than five because we, so we have not passed halfway. So we just go back to the 14.1. If it says 14.1499999, we have not reached halfway. So we go back. Now, if it's 14.19 and the nines are actually repeating out to infinity, then that is 14.15. So keep going. But if the nines stop being nines any time before infinity, then it's not halfway, go back. Any questions? Comes like a really harsh game of I can't sleep, I'll just stay up all night. Which is terrible, but. So moving forward, this 14.2 is not as good to use in our calculations as the 8.3 and the 11.5. We should prefer 8.3 and 11.5 in our calculations because those haven't been rounded. They're just given information. But the 14.2 has been rounded. So we got to watch out if we use this. Let's see what happens. The next thing I ask you to find is to find angle alpha. For angle alpha, the 8.3 is opposite and the 11.5 is adjacent. So for alpha, in terms of, from the perspective of alpha, 8.3 is opposite and the 11.5 is adjacent. We also have that the 14.2 is the hypotenuse, but that's been rounded. So we want to try to avoid that if we can. So if we decide that we're going to use opposite and adjacent to find alpha, what trig function are we going to use? Tangent. So let's avoid the rounded information and prefer 8.3 and the 11.5. Tangent uses opposite and adjacent. So I'm going to set up a tangent of alpha. So tangent of alpha is opposite 8.3 over adjacent, which is 
the centimeters cancel out. This is just a number. To find an angle, we use inverse trig functions. So since the tangent of alpha is 8.3 over 11.5, alpha itself is the tangent inverse of 8.3 over 11.5. I'm not gonna bother asking my calculator what 8.3 divided by 11.5 is, because I want the tangent inverse of that. I'm not interested in writing that number down. I'm just gonna go right to my calculator and say, hey calculator, what is the tangent inverse of 8.3? over 11.5, I get 35.8 degrees. Oh, I forgot, what, well, let's write down 35.8 degrees. And then let's go check what we need to round to. Round your answer to the nearest 10th of a degree. So we want to round to the nearest tenth of a degree, which is out of line with this, but that's okay. So I'm going to write down to the nearest hundred, 35.81. I'm rounding to the nearest tenth, which is this eight, and the next digit is a one. We have not got to 0.85, so we're going to go back to 35.8. The decision that we're trying to make here is, is it 35.8 or 35.9? Do we go back to 35.8 or do we continue on 35.9? Now, in this scenario, we had opposite adjacent and hypotenuse because the first problem was to find the hypotenuse. So we might be all excited. Hey, let's use hypotenuse because we just found that and I want to use the cool stuff that we just found. I don't know if that actually happens, but you know, I, let's just try it. So if 8.3 is opposite, and 14.2 is hypotenuse. Oops. Let's make a note that using hypotenuse to find alpha is kind of dangerous. If we use hypotenuse of 14.2 to find al uh, alpha, this can lead to rounding error. So uh, I might think 14.2 uh, is hypotenuse. So I might try to set up sine of alpha is opposite over hypotenuse. So that alpha is sine inverse of opposite over hypotenuse. Now we know we're supposed to get 35.8. In this case, we'll be fine. 30, uh, 35.76, and that will round to 35.8. But notice that it's different than what we had before. So notice that it's 35.76 uh, and then rounding to the nearest tenth is still 35.8.
but we do want to notice that we had a 76 here, and using the non rounded information, we had an 81. But also, look, we were 0 0.1, uh, 0 0.01 degrees off of rounding the wrong direction. Eleven points. Five. So here I pick. Uh, I started off by picking signs, which only point to be an opposite sign. Maybe we ignore that. Maybe eleven is a favorite number so we're like i'm going to use cosine and 11.5 so in this case alpha is going to be the cosine inverse of 11.5 over 14.2 Here we write down we'd write down 35.91, which rounds to 35.9, which is not correct. In this case, we did the calculations correctly, but we're not using good information. The 14.2 is a little bit shaky in it, a piece of information, and it threw us off into the wrong answer. So when you type in 35.9, and Canvas is like all, oh, no, that is incorrect. Take a look and, and ask, did I use some rounded information? And then use make the calculation again with the non-rounded information and say, ah, oh, Lee, why couldn't you have just done it this way? Well, I'm doing the problem one time. I can't be going after all the possibilities. Now you could raise the question, well, it's only 0.1 degree. That'd be like going in for a loan and having the loan off be like, oh, well, it's only a quarter point. Why don't you just go ahead and pay that? But like, well, that's not how it works. I'm not gonna pay as your quarter point because it's just a quarter point. We use rounded information. If the cosine, we use rounded information, cause the problem. With sine, we use the rounded information and it didn't cause a problem. We were lucky. No rounding error. Lucky us. Now, if instead of using 14.2, I use all the digits. So let's go back. Let's suppose that the most recent thing was, oops, that's not it. Dang it. Now here, the most recent thing on our calculator is the, the unrounded 14.2. If instead of using this rounded 14.2, if I use all these digits, if I set cosine inverse of 11.5 divided by this number, second A and S, now there is no rounding error because I used more digits. I did cosine inverse of 11.5 divided by 14.18233844. Not even rounding error here, but it's rounding error in the 12th degree, so we can. 
That's not rounding error that we expect. Actually, anybody in, account, in accounting, you might start caring about this. Any business majors? All right. Business majors are going to be like, um, actually, maybe that will matter. This is for Bitcoin. And then, fine. Any questions? Be careful with your rounded information. The way I set these problems up is very precise. If I say round in the nearest tenth, first of all, if you write anything other than something round in the nearest tenth, you're going to get marked wrong. So if you try to put 35.81, that will be marked wrong. Because I said round in the nearest tenth, and you're giving me hundreds. It's not better to give me more. The correct thing to do is give just what's being asked for, right? That's just philosophically sound in capitalist society. You should only be doing your job description. If your boss wants you to do more, if they want you to go over and above, they can pay you over and above. That's how capitalism game is played. Actually, that's how it's supposed to be played. How it's actually played is, well, the minimum is 15 pieces of flair. And I see that you've got 15 pieces of flair. Well, yeah. Well, don't you want to have more flair? No, I need 15. I've got 15. So, well, yeah, but look at Bob over there. He's got like 50. Good for Bob. You need 15. I got 15. If you want me to have more, raise the minimum and say you need 20 pieces of flair. And then, by the way, go out and give me 20 more, uh, five more pieces of flair because. You know, that's your requirement for this job. You know what I mean? It's like when we're like, oh, you have to be COVID tested. Tested. That's fine. I'm okay with that. But now you've got to give me the test. You've got to hand me tests. You can't make me go out and buy a fucking test. You know what I mean? I'm okay with that. But if it's a requirement for the job, then you provide it. Like, I don't know. I have to drive here to work and it takes two hours. How about you compensate me for that? And the gas and the mileage on my car. Look how much we've been hoodwinked. We take and spend our own fucking money to drive our assets to work. What a con job. Especially when you take places like Los Angeles and say in the 20s and 30s, and they said, you know what, you want people to be mobile and move around? We're going to build a light rail system all over the city with trolleys everywhere. And we're all going to collectively pay for it. We're going to put all our money together and we'll all pay for that so we all get to use this thing. And then the car companies said, nah, fuck that. We want to sell them cars. Stop building trolleys. And the politician is like, oh, no, this is good for the people. Here's some money. Are you, you still think it's a good idea? It's like, oh, no, it's a bad idea. And now everybody has to buy a fucking car on their own fucking dime. You know what I mean? Do you drive your own car to work? Fuck. Look what we've done to ourselves. What a bunch of fucking idiots. Just hoodwinked. Straight up hoodwinked. Drove my own car here today. Also using my own personal computer because I didn't like the one that they had. We well, can get this one. I'm like, oh, that one's no. Like, well, that's the one that we're going to provide you. Fuck it, I choose my own. You know what I'm talking about? They might have like a, a, a gargantuan commute. Some people have gargantuan commutes. So they're like, well, I have to drive two hours to get to work. You're driving two hours to get to work. You're not working eight hours. You're working 12. And so that's a two thirds pay cut. 
you think you're making a hundred thousand incorrect because you're spending half again the amount of time on work and you're not getting compensated for it because you've been convinced to use your own assets just to get to work. And then to re to reinforce it by saying, oh, because you're middle class now, you're not working class. If you're middle class, how come you ought to work to get by? I'm sorry, but there are two classes, working class, ruling class, that's it. If you still gotta work, surprise fucker, you're working class. Yeah, that's not what it means. That's the thing that they came up with. I bring the blame the British, by the way. That's the thing that they came up with to turn the wealthier part of the working class against the poorer part of the working class. Because if there's one thing that's consistent, it's, oh, poor people, fuck that. Fuck them. You know what I mean? Anyway, this is the revolution that I want to start. <laughs> and I just want to start with, it's like, oh, I have to drive to get to work. I should be compensated for my time. That's all. That's simple. Actually, it actually starts with, if your business model requires slave wages, then I don't care if the business ceases to exist. I'm okay with the business going away. Hey, Papa John, if you can't pay your, pay your employees a living wage, if it would cause your business to go away, then your business needs to go away. Well, then the revolution. Not that we're actually going to revolution. We're just trying to complain about it because human nature. But more importantly, watch out for your rounding error. I mean, shit. That's why you might be getting things wrong. One thing I do want to say quickly before we take a break is that at this point in the problem, we have two of the angles. As soon as you have two of the angles, just subtract to find the third one. That should be always your first, your first thing. As soon as you have two angles, Subtract to find the third. As soon as you have two angles, subtract to find the third. Immediate. Remember one of the angles that we have is 90. So to find when we want to find beta, since we have alpha at 35.8, this one's bad because this one has rounding error. Hey. As soon as you have two angles, subtract to find the third angle because this is the easiest of the three operations. Some of the angles is just involving addition and subtraction. That's the lowest level of thing to do. Up one from that is your Pythagorean theorem, but only because we did that before we get to sine, cosine, and tangent. All right, let's take a break and I'll figure out why Canvas is not accepting 54.2. Actually, I know why, it, because I typoed probably. It's on me. It's my fault. All right, let's take a break. Come back and do some more problems. Thank you.